Welcome to today's 3D print. Today we're going to talk about Simplify 3D. First, I love Simplify 3D. It is an amazing piece of software and it actually tangibly makes your prints better than other slicers, at least in my experience. Anytime I've stuck a, a file in Simplify 3D, it's come out amazing. Even on less than optimal printers, the results come out nice. Um, Today I want to talk about a bug in Simplify 3D, and it is, in honest to goodness, a bug. They won't recognize it as such, <laughs> uh, but it's a bug, and it's easy to fix now that somebody's told me how to fix it. I want to print the Starship Voyager. Okay. Now, this is the model I want to use to print Starship Voyager because it's got the most detail of all the models. It's got all this surface detail that makes or breaks whether a model is cool or not and um, that surface detail is important to me. All the lines and everything. Um, the size of the nacelles, everything. All the panels and stuff like that. I don't know how well you're going to see that, but you can see there's just a ton of detail. Now this model has a problem in that um, you can't print it without supports. Okay? Well, you can. <laughs> well, with minimal supports. That's why you see half a starship here. Because the other half of the starship can print without supports. I chose this point as the break point because at this point these nacelles touch the print bed. Which means I can build these nacelles without support as well. Okay? The only thing I need support for is this section right here because this is a hard overhang. I mean, believe it, actually my printer would probably be able to do this without supports, but it'll look grungy. And that's a part of the ship you're going to look at, so I wanted that part to look a little nicer and um, having supports will help that maintain its structural integrity there. But here's a problem. This model is not manifold. It's not a, well, it is. It's actually a manifold model, but it's made up of a zillion pieces. I don't even know how many pieces this is made of. Um, put it this way, you got to really scroll through it. Once you tell it to separate connected parts, that's very important. Um, Simplify 3D does not handle intersecting meshes. That's where you have two 3D objects, you put them here, it'll print them just fine. You overlap those two 3D objects, but they're actually two separate 3D objects, and the software has trouble with that. And understandably, that's a um, that's a messed up situation. I mean, it's, it's non... You have two intersecting parts that shouldn't exist together. Now, in a perfect world, the software would be smart enough to say, okay, well, let's just erase one of the parts where they intersect to make it a solid object. So, if I were to take this and this and I want to merge them together so that they overlap a little bit well just erase this portion and have it connect it does that it's called merge um, intersecting outlines I think it's called let me double check that um, where is that yeah merge all outlines into a single model um, and then what you do is you tell it to heal and what that'll do is it'll it'll make it it'll make it a solid mesh that's what you want. You want it to be a solid mesh. Now, you don't want this if you have moving parts, but those usually won't be intersecting. They'll be close, but they won't be intersecting. Now, one of the primary wonders of Simplify 3D is its manual um, support generation, where I can define where I want support. Because a lot of the times, uh, you know the capabilities of your printer better than the software does. I mean, how, how can the software know? It has no idea what you're even printing on, and no way for you to tell it. I mean, how does your software know how far your PLA and your nozzle and your printer can overhang without messing up? That's why we have torture tests, so that we can tell how good our printers are. But the software doesn't know that. So it has to use basic rules to figure out what it's going to do, how it's going to do it, etc., etc. Now, um, Simplify 3D when dealing with a part like this that has multiple pieces has a little bit of a bug that's counterintuitive. Let me point you at the screen here. We're going to switch over to looking at my computer screen view. Okay. So, make this bigger so it fills the screen here. So here we have this part and as you can see over here it's a lot of pieces. Look at all those pieces. I'm scrolling, 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 scrolling. It took Simplify 3D um, seven or eight minutes when I went to the command up here to mesh and I said separate connected surfaces. It took it like seven or eight minutes. There is a lot of parts here. Here, 
if I can I can I click on one? I don't know how to do that. Nope, I don't want to do that. It takes it away. Okay. I had to put these little discs underneath here to give a little better grip. You can see here for the nacelles because they kept breaking free. Those little discs gave it, you know, attachment to the bed, no problem. And of course, as usual with the wonder of Simplify 3D, it prints it makes such good G-code and my printer is very good that that disc I can peel it right off as if it was never there very cool anyway all I want is these supports here okay so in order to have any supports at all you have to enable support generation so support material generation generate support material makes sense right okay you have automatic placement but only used if manual support is not defined. That's not true. At least not entirely true. Let me show you what I'm talking about here. I usually use four millimeter. We're gonna come back to that setting in a moment. So, I go into tools, or is it repair? Where is it at? Tools, customize support structures. Okay, now I'm gonna hit, um, Clear all supports. Now, what the, let's, have, let's see what happens when I generate automatic supports. What the? Seriously? Ha, this will be interesting. Okay. Now you see here, it actually generated the supports I want automatically. The only thing I would do is I would remove these two supports here because I don't think they're necessary. Okay, but it's also added supports inside here which aren't necessary, but we can ignore those. They're not going to really break the model. Okay, let's try slicing this. Takes a little while, it's a lot of parts. Whoa, what the hell is all that? See all this extra crap? Look at all this extra crap on my model. That's support that the software added that I didn't ask it to. So not only does this bug not even show you the support that it's adding, you, you go into here and you customize support structures, remove existing supports, same four millimeters, same 50 degrees, same from build platform only, generate, oh wait a minute, clear all supports, generate automatic support. It only generated the support that I told that I wanted. A little more than I wanted, but it did a good job here. The bug in Simplify 3D is that it generates more support even though you didn't define it when you slice the model. So I'll go to slice the model again. It takes a while, it's a lot of parts. See? All this extra crap here all this extra crap here that I didn't ask for that's going to destroy the surface of the model because that's embedded in the model because it's adding support for some of these embedded pieces here this model is actually a whole bunch of separate pieces that come together it merges them but it generates the support before it merges them what the software should do is do the merge and heal first and then generate the support Okay, because it's doing the support before it does the merge and heal, which is why you have support inside the side of the model here. Okay, that's a bug. But the other bug is, the bug that this video is about, I just realized that that other thing is also a bug. It needs to do the merge and heal first before it generates the support. So merge and heal, then support. Not support, then merge and heal. It doesn't make sense to do it the other way around. So that's something they should fix in the software. But here, now let's clear all supports. Okay, maybe it's because I told it to automatically generate. Although, why it's not showing me the supports it's going to generate here? Again, another bug. Add new support. Let's add one support there. And one support there. Oh, right there. Okay, let's add those supports. Done. So, I only want support there. That's it. These discs are actually objects that I added. They're not support or brim. I added them. There's no way to add a brim here without also adding a brim here. So I just made a 0.2 millimeter by 10 millimeter disc and I dropped it underneath the nacelles to give them support. Okay, so those are mine, not the softwares. 
So I added these two supports. Prepare to print. Now I've told it to clear all supports and then I manually added those two supports, which means that's the only supports this model should have based on the UI in this software. And I get all this crap. <laughs> it generates all that freaking support, even though I just told it not to. Okay? That is a bug. That is the very definition of a bug. It should not be making this support because I explicitly told it not to. I told it to clear all supports and I manually defined supports. It even tells you right here automatic placement only used if manual support is not defined. It's explicit right there. It says only used if manual support is not defined. That's a bug. Now what it's coming from is an intrinsic bug in the software. When you enable support generation, any support that the software defines as needing support based on the criteria will get support if you don't add any. So because this model is like 80 parts and it thinks 30 of them need support, it's going to add the support because I didn't. Even though it says right there, only used if manual support is not defined. Okay? Now, there is a workaround. There's a workaround, a hack for this bug in the software. Change the support resolution to 99 millimeters. And now tell it to print. Prepare to print to slice it. There you go. It only made the support I told it to make. Just those two pillars right there. It didn't make support anywhere else. And it came out perfectly. Okay? Because Simplified 3D did a wonderful job of merging and healing. And of course, as usual, it supports our single finger removal. You know, they just pop right off. <laughs> I love their supports. They're great. And the model's clean too. Nice job. Very nice job. Nice and clean. Okay? But that's a bug. All right? Come on, devs. Fix the bug. If I manually define support, automatic generation of support should be summarily disabled because only used if manual support is not defined. And I defined manual support. The fact that I didn't define manual support for all parts is irrelevant. And on top of that, I did define manual support for all parts by clicking clear all supports. All right? That means I told it to clear all supports. All right? So you're violating the very wording of your own things here. Don't be upset. You have the best goddamn slicer software on earth. I am not aware of any program that is better than Simplify 3D. This stuff is amazing. Although I can't process a 300 millimeter version of the castle, so your software keeps crashing. And I can't do a QS Ed because your software keeps crashing, but that's kind of abusive to your software. <laughs> so I won't hold that against you. But this is a bug. Fix this. All right. If I clear supports and I manually define supports, don't generate new supports because I just told you not to. On top of that, if, com uh, if combine objects, let me make sure I use the right wording, if merge all outlines into a single model and heal is selected, actually I didn't even do that for that and it worked. That's weird. That should not have worked. Weird. But anyway, um, if this is selected, if, if merge and heal is selected, then um, you should do the merge and heal first and then generate the support. It does not make sense to generate the support before you do the merge and heal because the merge and heal fundamentally changes the model. So in your slicing process, I don't know what you call it, um, are you kidding me? It correctly generated the support this time? Oh, I have it. <laughs> I have the the hack on. Oh my god, I thought the maybe I didn't have merge and heal on all this time. Let's change that back to four millimeter. Let me double check. Maybe I'm crazy. But I spent hours fighting with this last night. I finally found the thread on the Simplify forums where the guy mentioned this hack to fix it, 
And I pointed, and he said, well, it's not a bug. And I pointed out, yes, it is a bug. <laughs> I just showed you why. But yeah, see, it generates all this crap support. Okay? Merge and heal first, then generate automatic support if you're going to do that. Or better yet, just do what your UI says. Don't do this if I manually define support. It says it right there. Automatic placement. Only use of manual support is not defined. Tools. Customize support structure. Clear all supports. Add new support structure manually. Done. Support manually defined. Support generated in violation of its own rules. Arr! Come on, guys, fix it. Really? Come on, stay put. And worse, do you know what their solution was to fix this? Make a process for each individual part and manually define no supports. Yeah. Right. I'm going to make 80 processes to get around a bug in the software. <laughs> no, it's not how it works. Processes isn't a solution to bugs. Fix the bugs. <laughs> okay? If it says only used if not manually defined, then don't use it if I manually define. If I manually define any supports at all, you should not be making supports on your own. On top of that, an additional bug... The software isn't even showing you the support it's going to make. I went into the support wizard and clicked generate support automatically and it does not generate that extra crap support in the model. So I can't even get it to show me the support it's going to make until I hit slice. And then it magically generates all this extra support that I didn't define that its rules say shouldn't be there. So come on, fix the problem make it work right. It's not that hard. Or at least, if you're unwilling for some reason to fix the bug in the software, put a big note right there that, you know, if you have a multi-part model and a manually defined supports, change this to 99 if you don't want it making supports automatically. <laughs>